My name is April Sloan. I am the Operations Section Chief for the Community Paramedic Division of the San Francisco Fire Department. I am here today to talk to you about utilizing community paramedics in an interagency response to street conditions. We have two learning objectives here today. One, at the end of this presentation, you will be able to define and understand the role of a community paramedic in San Francisco. And two, you'll be able to understand the impact of a community needs assessment and identify stakeholders and potential partners in collaborative efforts. San Francisco Fire Department's Community Paramedic Division is the largest in the state of California with over 50 members. These members are part of street crisis, street overdose, and EMS-6. Additionally, we have captains who act as incident commanders within the Healthy Streets Operations Center and the Tenderloin Joint Field Operations Program. EMS-6, which focuses on high users of the EMS system, started in 2004 with a single paramedic captain named Niels Tangerlini. His vision was successful, and there was a dramatic reduction in ED utilization by the top EMS users. Unfortunately, in 2009, the program was ended due to budget cuts. It was revived in 2015 with two paramedic captains for seven day a week coverage. It has since expanded to four captains on duty per day. EMS-6 works closely with many agencies to coordinate care for medically and psychiatrically complex people who often use substances and experience homelessness. It was those relationships built over time with city agencies and care coordination that resulted in the programs we have today. Community paramedicine is an innovative and evolving model of healthcare designed to provide more effective and efficient services at a lower cost. Community paramedicine allows paramedics to operate outside their traditional role of emergency response and transportation to facilitate more appropriate use of emergency resources and enhancing access to primary care to underserved populations. In 2014, the state of California started a community paramedicine pilot. In San Francisco, EMS-6 was part of the Frequent 911 and Sobering Center pilot. And in 2020, with the national movement of redirecting behavioral health calls away from law enforcement, it was logical that community paramedics already immersed in the patient population be part of that response. On a state and national level, community paramedicine continues to expand. Community paramedicine is not limited to response to behavioral health crisis. Other programs include follow-up after hospital discharge, hospice care, and transport to alternate destinations. In California, the Community Paramedicine, or Triage to Alternate Destination Act of 2020, formerly known as AB 1544, was formalized, and community paramedic programs across the state has started working with their local EMS authorities to develop policies and regulations to be implemented. All community paramedics will now be required in California to be certified by the International Board of Specialty Certification on an ongoing basis. Community paramedic programs are meant to serve the needs of the community. Depending on the location and the need, there's a great variability on staffing, deployment, and mission. The broad objective is to increase access to primary and preventative care, decreasing use of the emergency department, decreasing emergency department overcrowding, and reducing cost. In San Francisco, the need for engagement and care of high users of EMS became evident with increasing strain on the EMS system and emergency departments. Ambulance response times were increasing and EDs were overcrowded. In San Francisco, the community paramedic program is designed primarily to meet the needs of people experiencing homelessness who are medically and psychiatrically complex and often use substances. Community paramedics complete a six week course that includes four weeks of didactic and two weeks of clinical observation. The didactic portion focuses on social determinants of health, trauma-informed care, de-escalation techniques, motivational interviewing, and the most common medical and psychiatric conditions that we see in our patient population. To enter the community paramedic division, a paramedic must have three years minimum experience, complete an application, and successfully interview to be accepted into our division. On a larger level, San Francisco has also done a needs assessment and developed the whole person integrated care model. The San Francisco Department's San Francisco Health Network primarily serves people experiencing homelessness. They have 
existing non-traditional primary care, such as street medicine, urgent care, and behavioral health clinic services that are all very low barrier. Community paramedicine is considered part of that model, and we work closely with the partners in the emergency room, psychiatric emergency services, shelter health, street medicine, and sobering to provide services to these vulnerable individuals. Funding comes from Mental Health SF, which increases support and care for people who have mental health and substance use disorders. There are four key components, the Office of Coordinated Care, the Street Crisis Response Team, the Mental Health Service Center, and expansion of new beds and facilities. The Street Crisis Response Team started operations on November 30th, 2020, as a partnership between the Department of Emergency Management, Department of Public Health, and the Fire Department. Street Crisis responded to 800B type calls, which were for mentally disturbed individuals in the place of police. In the last three years, we have reconfigured the staffing model to better serve the patient population, and DEM has rerouted 800 Bs away from law enforcement, resulting in a street crisis or street crisis ambulance response to psychiatric calls in San Francisco. Mental Health SF prioritizes the following individuals, people experiencing homelessness, people who have a serious mental health diagnosis, and a substance use diagnosis, otherwise known as dual diagnosis individuals. Our goal is to provide rapid trauma-informed response to these individuals and to serve as a point of entry to services. In 2023, the San Francisco Fire Department's budget was nearly half a million dollars. Community paramedicine is a small portion of that, and we obtain additional funds through Prop C, which funds mental health as a It's a business tax paced. In 2023, the San Francisco Fire Department's budget was almost half a million dollars. The community paramedic division is a small part of that. The community paramedic division gets additional funding through Prop C, which was a 2018 tax initiative to fund mental health SF. Last year, DEM successfully transitioned the psychiatric calls away from law enforcement and over to the medical side. When a person calls 911 in San Francisco, the call taker will ask if there's any weapons or violence. If the answer is yes, the call goes to law enforcement. If the answer is no, the caller answers additional questions and the call taker will identify the appropriate resource and dispatch it. The process of switching to emergency medical dispatching was complex and challenging, but as of June of last year, law enforcement is not the primary response to behavioral health crisis. Street crisis response does not respond to active suicide attempts such as jumpers. Street crisis is not trained as a negotiator. Additionally, active suicide attempts with self-harm or overdose require a medical response and transport to the hospital. Based on information obtained during the call and in the CAD, crews can still call PD if they need for safety. In March of this year, staffing was reconfigured on street crisis. Clinicians came off the rig and were reassigned to follow-up care for the patients encountered by street crisis in order to perform a continuum of care. Street wellness and street crisis were combined as one unit. Street wellness was originally designed to take on 910Bs, which are well-being checks performed by law enforcement. There was significant overlap between the two patient populations seen by the teams, and the decision was made to combine them to improve patient care coordination. An EMT was also added to the staffing model to reduce workload. Previously, the community paramedic handled the radio communications, driving, safety officer role, and a heavy documentation load. Each unit also has a peer and or a specialist from the Homelessness and Supportive Housing Department on board. Community paramedic captains have had the ability to write psychiatric holds, known as 5150s in California, since August of 2022. They are reviewed by DPH on a biweekly basis. The feedback has been positive. The decision was made to train all community paramedics, not just the captains, on how to do holds. Training was completed last week by the Department of Public Health and the operational workflow is expected to begin in early July. Community paramedic captains are also available for interagency assistance when a clinician has placed a hold in the field. They will respond to the scene, coordinate the EMS resources and engage with the patient in a trauma-informed approach to facilitate transport to the hospital. 
When dispatched, treat crisis response in a van with medical supplies, food, water, and clothing. A medical assessment is performed and any acute medical conditions are addressed and transport to the ED is initiated if it is indicated. A psychiatric screening and evaluation are done, and if the patient meets 5150 criteria, a psychiatric hold is placed, and per EMS policy, the patient is transported to the ED for further medical clearance and screening. If there is no acute medical or psychiatric need, the person is assessed for social needs. A housing assessment may be done if the person is agreeable, shelter is offered, and or transport to the drug or alcohol sobering center, urgent care, and low barrier psychiatric services. There is wide latitude in the disposition of these calls, depending on the presenting complaint that initiated the 911 process. These facts and figures are from the last year when we cut over to EMD and solely took on the response to these calls. So close to 15,000 calls for service, and the disposition of these calls are about 25% go to the hospital. That's not a bad thing. Uh, that means we've identified an acute medical or psychiatric need and the community paramedic feels the ED is the most appropriate place for that person. 20% of the time, we do a non-ambulance transport, meaning that there is no acute medical or psychiatric need and the person is willing to go to shelter, drug and alcohol sobering, or the urgent care. 50% of the time, people remain in the community. All of our services are voluntary. If the person has capacity and does not meet criteria and declines the resources offered, they remain in the community as long as there's no public safety threat. Our average encounter duration varies between 38 and 55 minutes, and our average response time is 17 minutes and has been decreasing since the last reconfiguration. In the last year, SCRT re requested PD 1.19% of the time. Most requests are for scene management only. San Francisco Community Paramedic Division also has a street overdose response team. Opiate overdoses have increased nationwide, and San Francisco calls related to fentanyl overdoses have continued to increase over the past three years, as has the fatality rate. The street overdose response team started operation in August of 2022 with a goal of identifying and engaging survivors of opiate overdoses. SFFD took this initiative after realizing that the ambulances had contact with 50% of people who survived overdoses prior to their death. Every person is offered medication-assisted treatment on demand with buprenorphine, linkage to treatment if desired, offer of shelter, fentanyl test strips, and information on community resources. As part of the whole person integrated care, follow-up and continuing care coordination are integral to the success of the city's street teams. Encounter information, including demographics, Location and description are sent to the Office of Coordinated Care in the Department of Homelessness and Supportive Housing daily, where the information is triaged and referrals to the appropriate follow-up team are done. Additionally, encounter information is uploaded to EPIC, which is the city's medical record system, so any provider can look in there and see that they've had contact with one of our teams. Street Overdose has a dedicated follow-up team with POET, or the Post Overdose Engagement Team. Encounter information is sent to them on a daily basis as well, and additionally, real-time care coordination between SORT and POET providers often occurs. Individuals that are seen frequently by street crisis or extremely vulnerable, or individuals that are seen frequently by street crisis or are extremely vulnerable are referred to the SCRT multidisciplinary team, which is a case conference which occurs on a monthly basis where these individuals are identified and care plans are discussed. EMS-6 is the cornerstone of the Community Paramedic Division. Our criteria is four times in a month, 10 times in a year, or twice in a day. We identify our higher users by the ambulance charts written by the paramedics when they encounter these patients. We also take referrals from emergency departments, doctors, and social workers. In addition to their work with high users, EMS-6 also works with the Office of the Conservator to facilitate medication adherence with individuals who have been court ordered to take a monthly injection of psychiatric medication. Call to show support, the captain and the conservator will go to the residence and see if the person will take the medication voluntarily. If the person cannot be persuaded to take the medication, ambulance transport is arranged and the person receives the medication at the hospital. Another collaboration with EMS-6 is the Managed Alcohol Program, or MAP. 
During COVID, an EMS client exposed multiple individuals and they needed to isolate, but due to their severe alcohol use disorder, they would not be able to isolate safely without going into withdrawal. EMS 6 with sobering staff, quickly located a site, obtained donated alcohol, and created an induction and dosing schedule for the clients on site. EMS 6 located the patients in the community and brought them to the hotel. While they were there, we assessed them for housing and gaps in their care. The biggest incidental finding, though, was that these high, high users of EMS, the highest in the city, their utilization dropped to almost zero while they were at MAP. It was decided to extend past the initial quarantine period, and they are now a permanent part of the sobering program with plans to acquire a 20-bed facility in the near future. Community paramedic captains act as incident commanders at the Healthy Street Operations Center. Encampments consisting of tensor structures are identified on a quarterly basis and a schedule for resolution is created. The sites are noticed prior to encampment resolution and outreach workers offer services and shelter. On the day of the resolution, the incident commander works with the homeless outreach team, Department of Public Works, the police department, the Department of Public Health, and the MTA to offer services, clean the area, and resolve the site. Operations are five days a week with two resolutions per day. There's a public facing dashboard that shows the pre and post numbers of resolutions. In December of 2022, Mayor Breed declared a state of emergency in the Tenderloin in response to street conditions. The joint field operation is a multi-departmental effort to improve street conditions in the Tenderloin neighborhood of San Francisco. The JFO began in January of 2022 in response to the Tenderloin Emergency Initiative. At the time, the JFO was intended to be a short-term approach to supporting individuals experiencing homelessness or struggling with substance use disorders to access resources and treatment. With the closure of the Tenderloin Linkage Center, the JFO became an ongoing approach to service linkage with a continuous component of street cleaning. The JFO functions seven days a week from 9 to 1 p.m. and is staffed by many city departments with the San Francisco Fire Department as the IC, DPW, HSH, MTA, police. Currently, there is an injunction against the city that prevents us from compelling people to leave the sidewalk. The incident commanders can ask the person to move, clean the area, and the person may come back as long as they have four feet of space around them so people can walk by them safely on the sidewalk. Looking forward, we have several projects on the horizon. One of them is the Asian Pacific Economic Conference, which will be held in San Francisco of November this year. It is a huge economic opportunity for San Francisco's recovery post-pandemic. Potentially, there will be 21 heads of state, the president and the vice president attending this multi-day event. There's a health and wellness subcommittee, and along with that, a vulnerable work group, vulnerable populations work group has been created. I am the lead for that, and we are currently in the planning stages of what that what our operations will look like in the lead up and during the event. We will be continuing to take on additional call types of the 910B, the police well checks, for street crisis. We have research projects on the longitudinal impacts of our programs. And we are a supportive partner for the Drug Market Activity Coordination Center, which focuses on drug sales, drug use, and illegal vending. We are primarily there to assess impact on the EMS and CP operations. The biggest issue facing alternatives to law enforcement response are the legal considerations that are popping up. EMS is increasingly being scrutinized as law enforcement was. Legal liabilities related to entering residents and use of restraints on individuals in psychiatric distress is a topic that warrants further examination. The Community Paramedic Division remains a committed partner to the city agencies to meet the needs of the city when it comes to street conditions, serving vulnerable populations, and ensuring emergency services continues to be available in a timely manner to the public. My name is April Sloan. This is my contact information. Feel free to reach out with an email if you have any questions about the content I've shared today. Thank you.